so welcome back we continue with our questions okay so this is a, a paper that uh, Brian uh, picked up on and then we said uh, you know he couldn't find the rest of the questions and then we realized that we had not finished the paper and then we just had to go back and you know uh, correct that so thanks so much Brian and you know you could do the same as well if you see that we've made a mistake somewhere or uh, there's something that needs to be uh, worked out or something like that then just put it in the comment section we read your comments all the time and then we'll be able to correct that okay so question 18 it says the diagram shows the speed time graph of a of a car which traveled so you actually told the distance here it's always good practice to actually get a sense of how this information relates to uh, the uh, travel graph that you have so here the distance the total distance obviously it would be the it would be air under under this curve here for a speed time graph or a velocity time graph so already i have a picture of how it's supposed to look okay so it's always for the 60 seconds so obviously it's for the whole thing here you are asked to calculate the acceleration during the first 10 seconds so the acceleration uh, you should know the, the formula of the how the acceleration relates to the to the graph so the acceleration it's actually the gradient so acceleration equal to uh the gradient okay so if you want you can actually just straight up say uh, 15 divided by 10 here and then get 1.5 that would be your gradient it should be fine okay but then it can become really tricky if this one we're not starting at zero so i'm actually going to show you a very um fast and useful way of um uh, working out any uh diagram really that you'd have a speed time graph and then you'd be asked to find the acceleration just determine two points here so i'm, I'm checking uh this one zero zero okay so uh just think of it as the cartesian plane and here i'm also checking uh this points here 10 15 like this okay so gradient would be equal to change in y so 15 minus zero so 15 here minus zero divided by change in x which is 10 minus minus zero here so you actually get 15 over over 10 then you get one point 1.5 then you actually have to put the the units for for acceleration okay so it's um uh, meters per, per second squared okay let me actually write it uh, uh, better here okay so like this so this one would be your your acceleration uh, on the b part you asked to find uh, time t here so uh, here it's a, it's a trick of just knowing how it relates to the total distance so if you are to find the total distance here the way that you do it is to actually find the area of uh, this trapezium here and the area of trapezium how do you uh, find the, the the area of trapezium so obviously you would say uh so you can let me let me just uh wipe off everything here okay so area of trapezium so you can say distance equal to area of trapezium okay so the distance equal to area of trapezium so the distance is uh 705 it's equal to the a of trapezium but then how do you find the a of trapezium you have to say h over 2 so h where h is the perpendicular height between the the two parallel sides okay so this one is the uh the parallel sides the upper part and the lower part okay so uh the perpendicular height would be with this part here so it'd be saying 15 over over 2 as in h over 2 if you want you can actually state that formula uh, if you get anything wrong then they can I actually just give you uh, some marks straight up okay so here you'd get this one then it would be h over 2 a plus b where a and b are the uh, the um, uh, this sides here okay so the parallel sides so here you have 60 obviously so here would be 60 then plus the other side here would actually be so I'm going to uh, write uh, square brackets so that I'll be able to use Kelly brackets right now. So the length from here to here would actually be uh, t minus minus 10 like this, okay? So now it becomes just a general equation which you have to solve for, for t. Uh, if you want, I can go straight up directly. You don't have to multiply inside because you, you introduce like bigger numbers. So what, you, what I'll do is that I'll cross multiply here and then get these things to this other side, okay? So it'll be uh, 705 multiply by 2 over 15 like this equal to 60 uh, plus t minus 10 like this okay so i'm guessing that 15 is actually a factor here but then you can you can just try so 15 into 70 we go up to 60 so uh, when we go up to 60 we actually get to to four times okay and then we're left with 10 then 15 to uh, 100 105 
and then you just say uh, 15 divided by 105 then you get 7 okay so obviously 15 is a factor we're going to use it so I'm going to say let me actually change my uh, pen right now so 15 to 15 to this one then you get 4 then you left with 10 here uh, into 105 then you get 7 okay so I'm um, getting uh, this much and you can also say uh, 47 multiplied by 2 then you get uh, 90 94 okay so 40 by 2 then you get 80 then 7 by 2 then you get 14 14 plus 80 you get uh, 94 okay so 94 is equal to uh, 60 minus 10 here you can just straight up uh, do that uh, simplification and you get 50 50 plus t then here I'm going to transpose this one to this side here so you get 94 minus minus 50 then you actually get uh, 44 here okay so 44 here although there's no way of uh, actually verifying it you can just substitute back and if you use the wrong formula then you'd probably uh, check this as, as right but then the 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 reassuring thing is that t is actually uh, between ten and, and sixty indeed. Okay, so uh, c is, t is a, is a reasonable number forty four year. So forty four seconds. That would be what we are going with. So let's go to the to the next question. It's on circle geometry and it's a diagram. You told these points. Usually the information that they give you here. Sometimes. Most of the times you can actually read it off of here, okay? So there wouldn't be any need to to actually refer to this information unless they are parts where you are you actually don't understand uh what what's what okay so you can just refer back and say okay what's this angle referring to and then you can see that oh this is actually B A G so like this okay so uh here I, I like to before i even uh, start anything sometimes it's good to actually read the room and see oh this is how it's happening so for example this this uh angle here you have this triangle here so it's a bit hard to explain for me but then you have this triangle here and then you have this angle here so obviously there's a theorem that says this angle must be equal to, to this angle okay so it's just some interesting stuff that you can deduce just by looking at this so here uh, this is a diameter so obviously this one is 90 degrees so those are some of the things that you can actually deduce from just from uh you know uh, straight up just looking at uh it at a diagram okay usually they give you a sequence uh the questions in a sequence and the sequence usually it's the sequence in which uh things are easiest to actually work out so aec you ask to find AEC the first thing is to identify AEC so this one is A this one is E this one is C so it's actually uh, this part here AEC okay so here um, you can see this code this code here this code here is common for for the angle subtended at D and then the angle subtended at, at, uh, at E so you can actually straight up just say uh, you know this angle here and this angle is there, they're actually equal, okay? So I'm going to write 50 degrees here. Angles are subtended from the same chord, okay? So A, B, B, C, so you identify again A, B, then C would be this angle right here. So this angle right here, well, I can see that A, B, C, E, this is a cyclic uh, quadrilateral, so these angles, they should be complementary. So uh, here I have 50, so this one has to be 130, okay? So 130 is in 180 minus minus 50 degrees. These two angles, they have to add to, to 180, okay? So this one would be 130 degrees just like this. So if you're asked to find EAF, so you first identify it, EAF would be uh, this angle here. And then I'm thinking this angle here must be equal to uh, this angle here, okay? So you have uh, uh, this angle making, you know, this triangle A, E, C. Uh, it's a triangle and then it's resting on this tangent here so this angle must be equal to the opposite uh, interior angle which it should be this one this is only applicable if the vertices of the of the triangle actually rest on the circumference okay but then how do we find this one now that's the tricky part so you can also think of this as a chord okay so this chord here that means that this angle and this angle must be the same so you actually have 20 degrees here as well so this one this angle this angle they're the same but then we had also if you still remember when i was introducing you to this i'd say that this this has to be 90 degrees so they are the obvious angles that you can actually start by filling up okay so because if you don't start by filling up those then you might just forget and then you know you lose a clue and then all of a sudden you can't actually crack the, the questions so here would be the 90 degrees 
So uh, here is 70, uh, 20 degrees. So obviously here would be 70 degrees. If here is 70 degrees, so obviously here would be would be 70 degrees as well. Okay. So it's a uh, circle geometry is one of those questions where they 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 rarely ask you to uh, give reasons or anything like that. But then if you can, you can just uh, reason say okay this this angle is equal to this this angle is equal to this because of uh, this 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 and then it should, be, it should be fine. Okay. So and then you're asked to find A C E. So A C E this uh this one so ace it's it's equal to 70 again okay so usually if uh, we got this one first so usually it actually means that uh there's a chance that uh there was an easier theorem that we could have uh gone by so here the easier theorem would have been to say uh this is a this is a our diameter and then it's meeting a tangent so obviously this has to be 90 degrees okay so it would have saved us um, a lot of time okay so i complicated the whole thing but then this one was supposed to be 90 degrees then you just say um 90 minus 20 then you get 70 and then this should be it okay so that's it for for this question and um these, these are really really interesting questions i love this this paper and uh, we'll continue with the paper in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. You bought out. Mm -hmm.